All right, everyone. It is 11 a.m. here on the East Coast, which brings us time for the functional group update. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. This uh, FGU will be ran by all members of the built team that are present today. I'll be covering some of the cloud native container works that I've been working on. DJ will be handling some changes to the upcoming config and roles behaviors that are being introduced with GitLab 10.0 as an omnibus package. Josh will be covering some installation improvements with what we've done to ease configuration in the SSL. And Ian will be covering Postgres HA and the upcoming changes with new versions of Postgres that are coming along. So I've been working lately on the Cloud Native Containers OKR. This has to do with creating a Docker image and chart per component of the GitLab services. It's being worked on at, for helm.gitlab.io. This is different than our existing Helm charts. Our existing Helm charts are used uh, to actually deploy the omnibus container and related services. However, we're looking to actually separate every role and concern into its own container to allow better maintenance and rolling forward. This is a specific pathway away from our monolithic container, allowing us to use preferably all upstream containers where possible for any service that's not directly related to our code. Right now we have the standalone registry that is using the upstream registry container for Docker distribution. There's very solid progress there. However, there is some final testing and tweaking that needs to be done to ensure it works on all public clouds. Next up is the standalone sidekick container, which is going to be an interesting feat because of the requirements that it has and the number of integrations that it has throughout all of the GitLab services. I wanna note that this is a long-term set of OKRs and that this will be something that is not completely production ready until 2018 as we continue to work on this and ensure that our customers that are using it with GitLab EE have completely tested rock solid behaviors before we call it completely good. We will be working with parts of this, however, in the, the meantime, as we make each component 100% ready, we will be getting, transitioning those into staging and onto production. Yeah, so some changes we've made uh, over the past couple of weeks to the top level config. Um, uh, one of the things we added right around the time of uh, the last functional group update was a change to how uh, you can nest your config in GitLab RB. So we've changed it so that after a certain nesting level, previously you'd have to use uh, open up an object and, and instead of using the uh, keyed style reference, you'd have to reference it, uh, you'd have to create a new object and fill it in. And that was causing a lot of confusion. Uh, it wasn't clear even to us on the team. We didn't always remember at what level you had to do this, switch from one syntax to the other. And uh, so we made a change that went into 9.5 that allowed uh, you to use the full syntax all the way down. So that's uh, very apparent on something like uh, LDAP integration in uh, GitLab RB, where often in the GitLab RB, it, opens up into this big object, uh, you could then switch to, you can now switch it to be kind of the same syntax as uh, all the rest of the config where you have just a line for each option. Um, we've also been making a, a bunch of changes uh, internally to make maintenance easier based around um, the top level config objects we have. Um, so we've added in uh, this idea of, of services of declared services in our code. Uh, so that's by services, I mean things like uh, workhorse and and uh, GitLab pages and Nginx and all that stuff is separated as uh, um, a service object and that they are grouped into various areas. So Redis has several services, uh, all of Prometheus has several services and exporters. Uh, and those groups can be enabled and disabled within our code. So that makes things a little bit easier when we go to uh, um, make roles and uh, uh, disable services so that we uh, we don't have to keep the the code doesn't have to know the specific services that need to be disabled that we can just reference that we want to disable this group of services and later on we can add in um, more services to those groups and it's less likely that we'll miss it somewhere in our various configurations so that's been a problem that we've been running into uh, 
when we've added services and we have this documentation on how to set up like an HA node and it says all these different things you have to turn off. But since that documentation was there, we've you know added uh, additional services. So we've made changes there to make it easier uh, for us to manage that. Those, those changes aren't exposed uh, to the users yet. Nothing's changed there um, as far as users are concerned at the moment. Uh, we, we've uh, rewritten how we do our top level uh, configuration and how we declare uh, services in our code. So I have a link to the docs. Uh, that's one of the most common things in Omnibus that the other the other teams around GitLab come in and, and add is when they need to add a new service. Uh, so we've kind of reduced the duplication of the areas where they need to add, um, uh, add code to get that new service config to work and added some docs around how to do it. Uh, and then um, we've introduced, um, we've expanded our idea of uh, roles in um, the Omnibus project to encompass uh, something called the default role. So previously, uh, when you install GitLab, uh, we have a bunch of services enabled by default. Um, we've now disabled them all, all by default in our code, but we've now created a default role that's enabled by default that goes and enables them as you run reconfigure. Uh, so this is another thing where um, nothing has changed as far as users are concerned. There's no user facing change at the moment, but uh, inside uh, Omnibus things have changed uh, quite drastically um, in terms of how we look at our services that are enabled and uh, how we deal with them and how we'll be maintaining things going forward without and adding new services without forgetting about the old ones and adding new roles. Um, so those are all in use with uh, GitLab 10.0. And then on the next slide, uh, the upcoming role changes um, uh, going in that will be going to the next couple of releases uh, have to do with then exposing the benefits of these changes to uh, users in the uh, GitLab RB. So uh, we'll be allowing users to uh, set uh, the role or list of roles for your GitLab server kind of at the top of your GitLab RB. At the moment, you have to go through and kind of like find the role you want. Say it's a Redis set no role and enable and flip it to true. We'll instead just beginning giving you the option to list the uh, type of rules that your GitLab instance is. This is largely for um, GitLab HA setups. And we'll be doing a lot of focus around uh, documenting these different rules. Um, one of the things we are uh, doing is uh, seeking, looking for different opinions on, on how to declare role specific configuration. Uh, and so I've, I've linked an issue there for uh, a discussion around how we might be uh, doing that in the future and how we might um, ch change the declaration of, of your different settings in GitLab RB for different roles. So that's kind of an exploratory phase at the moment. And then uh, moving on to some of the things that have uh, just uh, recently gone in for the 10.0 release uh, that have been worked on by uh, Marin. Um, we've uh, dropped the old dataDir config option. Uh, so this is uh, from uh, about a year ago, we switched uh, this git dataDir config option for controlling where your git data is stored on the file system. We switched it to being called git dataDirs and ha it has a new format. So the old the old format is now no longer supported and we'll throw, uh, throw an error in GitLab 10. Uh, the GitLab git HTTP server config has been removed. So that's what uh, GitLab workhorse used to be called uh, like two years ago. So there was a config option called GitLab git HTTP server that of course over the years has been moved to be uh, the GitLab workhorse config. So the old name has been removed. And uh, then we've also dropped uh, TLS version one from our default accepted protocols uh, for uh, Nginx inbound traffic. Uh, um, for users who need it, they can still add back um, the option of supporting it, but it's no longer turned on by default. And then uh, finally, we recently added um, a code of conduct to our contributing page on the GitLab Omnibus project. That's all I'm going to talk about. Over to uh, Joshua for installation improvements. Awesome. 
Thanks, David. Uh, so we got some exciting things obviously coming here with 10.0. Uh, we're doing a lot of cleanups, removing a lot of old cruft from, uh, from the Omnibus package to make it easier for everyone going forward. Uh, and uh, as you saw earlier, also working on some key future projects there with the uh, CloudNet containers. So uh, all really exciting. Um, other cool things we're doing here is also focusing on the current installation method, of course, which is Omnibus for most users. Um, and we've been working to make it easier to install uh, with fewer potential bumps in the road. Uh, so one really exciting feature we have in 10.0 that was added uh, was Marin's really good idea was to uh, allow you to pass or set the GitLab URL on the app get install command. So you can see the command there. Um, and what this does is really allows us to skip the next two steps. Uh, so before, if you simply did the app get install, you'd have to then go in edit gitlab.rb, set the external URL, um, and then run GitLab CTL reconfigure. And that'll then, of course, apply uh, the URL and reconfigure and start everything. Um, so you don't have to do that anymore if you actually specify it on the command line there. Um, so a nice uh, improvement there for our users. Uh, and you're now, on, you know, our installation process is now reduced to three steps. You install dependencies, you add the package repo, and you install GitLab. And after you install GitLab, GitLab is then reachable on the URL, of course, after we go through and start everything. Um, so really cool stuff there. Um, the one limitation is that it only works on HTTP sites today. Um, however, if we go to our next slide, uh, you'll see in 10.1, we're looking to address that. So in 10.1, we're gonna let you do the same installation command, but you can now specify HTTPS. And we'll go ahead and work with Let's Encrypt and retrieve uh, these certificates for installation, um, as long as, of course, it is publicly reachable, which is how Let's Encrypt uses, uh, or rather validates that you have proper control of the domain. Um, so some cool stuff there. Uh, we're coming in 10.1 and uh, should really help uh, uh, address sort of the getting started process and testing uh, with SSL, as a lot of our newer features do depend on it. For example, um, trying to work with the GitLab registry without having SSL turned on can be painful. Um, so uh, this is a great improvement there. Uh, the question I saw come in on renewals. Uh, so uh, we'll be adding a GitLab CTL renew command. Um, well, not exactly that, but a renew command in GitLab CTL um, just because that requires uh, root access to go in and uh, write the Nginx certificates. Um, so it won't be done completely automatic because you don't have something that kind of runs uh, over time like that uh, that has root access. However, you will be able to renew them from the GitLab CTL command line. Um, so obviously the key benefits here really is faster and easier installations um, and with fewer potential potholes. Um, uh, configuring SSL with Nginx wasn't really difficult, but it also wasn't super easy or straightforward. You had to move files into certain locations, you had to edit the GitLab RB, you then had to potentially tweak some other settings um, depending on how your uh, configuration was set up. So um, uh, again, this, this streamlines that whole process. Uh, and if you still do want to bring your own certificates and you don't want to use Let's Encrypt, you of course still have all the manual configuration possibilities in Omnibus to take over and still support you. So with that, we can, I think, pass it on over to Ian and talk about all the awesome stuff coming with Postgres HA, which is super exciting. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, so the, the, the last uh, field, field group, functional group update, sorry, that we had with the build team was uh, we had just released uh, the HA support, but with manual failover. Uh, and that manual failover process was still somewhat painful, uh, better than the alternative of no failover process, but uh, not perfect. So with 9.5, we released the beta version of automated failover uh, using console, rep MGR, MPG bouncer. Uh, we've been pounding on that. It's running and staging. Uh, we haven't found anything to run screaming from. So with 10.0, we are going to no longer consider it a beta product. Uh, we are going to consider it released and supported. And I know there have been some people who have been really anxious, uh, including customers as well as their production team to take advantage of that. So we're excited that this is this is ready to go uh it's been it's been a 
a challenging thing to do, but it's cool. It's great. Um, it's pretty neat to watch it over if you knock out a database and just watch everything kind of kick in and pick a new master and then tell the application to, to kind of move over and start talking to that. It's pretty neat to watch. So we're happy with that and we're, we're really excited that that is finally going to be going out the door and other people are going to get to play around with this. Uh, and then also the, the next big step is uh, Postgres 9.2 is no longer going to be bundled with Omnibus. Uh, as of this month, it has reached end of life. So we should not be shipping a product that is end of life. Uh, 9.6 has been available since I think November last year was the first time we bundled 9.6 in there. Uh, and as of the, the, post, the GitLab 9.0 release, we were forcing 9.6 by default and upgrading people unless they specifically opted out. So it's no, you know, it's time. If you're not on 9.6 already, then you've been kind of dragging your feet a little too long. So if anybody tries to install GitLab 10.0, with with that they're still running Postgres 9.2, uh, then that is going to err. Uh, it won't kill their GitLab installation. It'll still be running on the older version, but they will need to first upgrade to Postgres 9.6 uh, in order to upgrade to GitLab 10.0. And the good news on that is that we will move our versioning apart a little bit, so it will no longer be really confusing to be talking about GitLab and Postgres at the same time and have to worry about 9.x of which GitLab or Postgres. Unfortunately, that is short-lived because by the end of the year, Postgres 10.0 is due to be released. So then we'll have the confusing versioning again. But uh, there are some good, cool things in that. I encourage everybody to look at the, the release notes. I believe the database team is very excited to get that rolled out. And we certainly can't be supporting three versions of Postgres in the package at all. So we're getting 9.2 out in time to roll 10.0 out when it is released. Uh, and just for... Uh... Uh, using the Postgres bundled version or the OnOS bundled version of Postgres, right? So if you're using external versions of Postgres, uh, this won't affect you. Uh, not immediately. I believe there is some functionality that the database team wants to take advantage of that they can't if people are still running 9.2. So I can't speak on when that will be removed from, from GitLab, but yeah, currently it'll just be effect, affecting people who are using the bundled Postgres version. So I think that's it for me, and we are on to questions. No questions? Yeah, I'm not seeing any questions in there. So if anybody has any, jump them in real quick. Otherwise, we're going to give you back 13 minutes of your day. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for coming. We will see you in the team call.